Our super soul sister today is Fauzia Nachibonekana. Many of you know her. Some of you may not know her real name because she's been in this industry for quite a while. Now, of course, she's part of the Ebony's. Uh, she joined as a teenager. Now, that is what we call commitment, okay? And this is a time when most people are not sure about the film industry in Uganda, about the drama, about... This is a time when everyone had something to say about this, this particular field of work. Now, my name is Joanna Kajumba. I'm excited, very excited to have her here with me because guess what? As much as you're going to learn, I'm going to learn along. Uh, it's good to know experiences. It's good to learn from people that are so good at what they do. But remember, she's our super soul sister, not just because she's in acting, but she has reached where she is because of time invested. All this time that she's put in, all the efforts that she's put in, we need to learn a thing or two. <laughs> and I must say kudos to you. Oh, thank you. Kudos to you. I mean, we need to appreciate <coughs> our women more and more and more because this is even a tougher field, you know, with, with all kinds of criticism and judgment and oh my God and this and that and that. Um, you're some of the people that have helped people understand and appreciate. Thank you. And appreciate the film industry more. Thank you. But you're very welcome. <laughs> You're very welcome. I don't want to think I'm getting off track here. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Indeed. Now, um, what people want to know, who is Fauzia? You know? <laughs> this is a question that we ask every day, mm -hmm. but people may not realize why it's a very important question. Who is Fauzia? Fauzia Nachuonika is a, is a very simple person. Mm. What you see is what you get. Uh -huh. um, I love living a simple life. Mm -hmm. I hate complicating my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was born to Haji and Haja Tibosa mm -hmm. of Masaja. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Jinja. Oh, then okay. we later on moved to Kampala. Uh -huh. After getting some complications at work, okay. my dad and my mom, we yeah. had to shift and come to Kampala. So I went to school in Jinja, oh, okay. in Victoria now. Um, nursery school, then Main Street Primary School, mm -hmm. my entire primary. Mm -hmm. Then when we shifted to Kampala, mm -hmm. I joined Najan Nkumbi Young Christian School mm -hmm. for my O level, and then Aga Khan High School for my A level. Okay. Then I enrolled at university, Makere University for a degree in, um, I was doing BA Economics, but because mm -hmm. of the tough schedules of work and all that, I dropped out. Okay. So for some good time, I was not in school. Mm. Then at, certain, at a certain point, I felt inadequate and I decided to go back to go university. Back to okay. so, so I went to KIU. Okay. Then I so we shall get back to that. You're, you're mm. taking us on a speed train. But let's come back. <laughs> at let's home. come back to home <laughs> now. Oh. Okay. How many are you? Do you have siblings? We are quite many. Uh, ne, as Baganda say, uh, but we are really many. <laughs> it's a big family. Uh, yes, I relate. Mm. I relate. Trust me, the whole of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big family. Yes. Mm. That's beautiful. That must have been nice growing up. Eh? It's the best time of my life. Yeah. When you are many at home, yeah. you relate in different ways. You mm. have your particular family things that you do that other families don't do. Yeah. It was really nice growing up in a what big family. What do you in particular that excites you up to now? Um, I was too much of a tomboy. <laughs> too, too much of a tomboy. I'm tom surprised by that. I just changed it was after having kids. Yeah. <laughs> but then at home there was a lot of bullying, by uh, the way. Okay. A you lot, I think it's boys. what made me stronger yeah. and it's what made me on the defensive and like looking out for, for myself. Yourself, all day. Yes. But those boys. Were you boys, surrounded by boys most? I follow three boys. Can you imagine? Ooh. Three boys. Yes, now imagine. they did to me whatever they would do. <laughs> yeah. I became a boy almost. We would climb trees, we would mm. go to the river because we grew up in Ninja. Mm. We would go to the source of the Nile, they would, they would swim almost across, and our parents didn't know. Oh. We would go looking for Banag. It was crazy. <laughs> you enjoyed. <laughs> but I enjoyed. Those were the best days of my yes. life. Mm. Yeah. So home was fun. Home was having fun. Home was yes. so fun with mm. all those kids. Yeah. It's too and, bad. And school was near home, I would assume. It was near home. 
at mm. first. Because mm. we, we used to live, our first home was at Main Street. Mm. And the school I used to go to was, was Main, Main Street, Street Primary School. Yes. Then we shifted to some other places, just a little bit away from Town, the yeah. main city. Mm. Yeah, but it was all not so, so far away. How was, how was, how was uh, school? Nursery and primary? Nursery. There were day schools and yeah, they what were. was that like? They were. So, mm. in nursery, we had a sister, one of my elder sisters, mm. who used to drop us in the morning. Yes. And then, after school, she would come and pick us during lunch hour. Our, our mom would come for us. Yes. She would come and pick us. So, nursery, I remember my, my, my most vivid memory was when I was given my brother's container, mm. the one that I follow is called Abu. I reached in my class during break time, instead of taking him his container, yeah. I gave it to my friends. <laughs> and they ate <laughs> his breakfast. Now oh that boy, that <laughs> it must was have... war. <laughs> how could you do that to me? How could you, how dare you? I, I was so ashamed oh. and I felt bad at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and then another time they forgot us at school. Oh, so yeah. we'd say the entire afternoon, yeah. and you know, you're supposed to pay for it. Yes. And our mom came. She took us home and the whole house was on fire. And my mom is not simple. <laughs> the whole house was on fire. Could you forget the kids at school? How could you? How, eh? yeah. So I remember most of those childhood things yeah. here and there. And it you, was you used to be, a, Ginger is known for what they call it, Mpafo. <laughs> but that, the, 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 Mpafo, Mpafo. The ones that have seeds. Yeah, like, yeah. they were there. Yeah. So that when the season was on, yeah. we would eat them. Yeah. Plus jambula. Jambula, yes. And uh, there was a certain fruit called badam. Oh, yes. Badam, yes. it would make the lips yes. red and yes. all that. Yes. So I, even, um, what is that fruit called in English? I've forgotten the name. Mm. It is sour. It is sour and a little bit. It's called Nkoge. Nkoge. Oh, it has a name, man. Yes. Um, so those fruits... It's gone. Because they, they would make uh, ice out of it as well for kids yeah, and things yeah, yeah. like that. Ah, that was fun. Yeah. That you must have had fun. We did. We, we used... I used to know Ginger Town like the back of my hand. Because <laughs> we used to go everywhere. And on foot, by the way. Yeah. Foot. So when, we, when you moved, how did that make you feel? <sighs> Our moving... Mm. wasn't out of our liking yeah. and it wasn't out of my like it wasn't a decision that my father would have wanted to, to make at that particular moment but you know at the time when there were companies were closing and companies were cutting off you know downsizing yes. and all yes. that because they used to work with people's transport company uh, my mom was working there as well as my father mm. so during that time there we used to own um, a grocery, grocery store. Yes. So they used to go to work, and then we used to run the shop as well. Oh, as we a used family. to help out. We used to help oh, out. That's good. During the weekend. Yeah. But there are some sweets which couldn't survive us. <laughs> I can't imagine. So. You're like I'll just pick five. They won't know. <laughs> so we used to live in company houses yeah. and all that. You know, everything yeah. is t taken care, care of. Yeah. Yeah. The money was there. Mm. We were living a good life. Yeah. You know. We were well off, yeah. doing so well, yeah. actually. Because it was even an extended family. We used to live with our uncles and oh, aunties at home. Yeah. Kati, with the downsizing of people's transport company, mm. later on, it's ceasing to exist. exist yeah. My dad went out of work. My mom as well. Yeah. So, you know, it was a big, big family. And this way, where are we living right now, which was like, you know, like you have your, your land there, oh, yes. and you have a village home, which oh, is there, yeah. some relatives mm. are the ones occupying it, nothing much is happening there. Mm. Life became so hard for us. Mm. We had, things had to shift. Mm. You, know, you know, like a 360 turn from yes. having a great life yes, to, to going down because all our siblings used to go to Namasagali College, Miri College, Stella, Stella Maris College in Suwe. You know, mm. they were all going to They're good going schools. To, yes. yeah, everyone was going to good schools. But with that change in our social life, yeah. everything changed mm. for the worst. Mm. We came to Masaja, to the village, because that was a place they never used to take care of. Uh, yeah, I know. And we never, kids. Yeah. We even never got to know about 
Bino Babi Tabatiam or Uganda, how do you call this yeah. farming and all that? We had no yeah. idea. Yeah. Because we, even when we were still staying in the city, they used to get food from the farm. From the farm they used yeah. to own land that <coughs> side. And they would bring food over the weekend. We never got a too many Baba Jidimida. So here comes Masaja. We had to start learning how to dig. Mm. It was so hard for us, those who are still young at that, yes. at that point. But you know, we maneuvered and all that, and we survived. We yeah. survived the bad yeah. times, mm. and good enough that period, that very, very hard period, did not tear our family apart. We yes. became you stronger stuck and together. Yeah, stronger. Stuck together. Yes. Even up to mm. now, my dad and my mom mm. are still living together. That's but it was, it was such a big lesson yeah. to us in life. Like, and earlier on, you did mention that um, your mom was going for was was going to travel for the holy journey to Mecca. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that was after How I was you born. Yeah. She she tells me I was six months. Oh wow! <laughs> and she didn't want to leave me behind just yeah. like that. So she had this connection with with the nuns. Yeah, Wanya Teresa Verica from. Um, Masindi, oh, yeah. Port Porto rather. Yes. So, apparently she called them and yes. she explained her situation. She was like, you bring the little one over. Mm. So there was that particular sister who was in charge of me. She was called Sister Monica. Yeah. So they took me there. When they took me there, when they returned from Mecca, my dad told her, can you please bring back my child? She was like, ah, ah she's having a good time there. If you want to keep visiting her. Yeah. So my dad yeah. would make the journeys to, oh, to, to Fort Porto. He would drive visit, and come yeah. and visit me. <laughs> so they yeah. would ask me, Mbu, <laughs> who is your father? I would say, Haji Bosa. Yes. And who's your mama? Sister Monica. Oh, and dear. people would go like, <laughs> This Hajibanak, <laughs> he went in for a man. <laughs> so it was such a crazy situation. Oh, so you, your childhood at this point, you, you grew up under uh, a Christian setting. Yeah, it was a Christian like setting. That. That's quite but interesting. They got me from there when I was like one and a half, yeah, so one and two okay. months. Yes. And I didn't know Uganda. Yeah. I didn't know my mother tongue. So yeah. I could speak Kitoro uh -huh. and English. Okay. And when they brought me back home, I didn't recognize anyone. <laughs> I could answer? not recognize, apart from my dad. Yeah. And, and they would give me food and refuse to eat it. Mm. Until one day I was going to starve to death. And, and they like, had to you know go what, so? at the nearby covent and bring in a nun to come to and feed, feed me. You. But when, okay. once I saw the veil, you were like, this my is head it. and I'm like, oh, I this excelled. My, yeah, so I can the, imagine. <laughs> Very picky child. Very. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So that is when now your ginger journey. We were still in ginger. Yes. That side, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you moved to Kampala, things were a bit tough and a bit tough. Things rough. were very tough. I first yeah. stayed with some relatives in ginger mm. because when the family was moving, we moved in bits. Yes. There are those who came first. There are those who are still in boarding school and had to wait on them. Yeah. And then there are those of us who are taken to some relatives because we are going to day schools yeah. and we had to complete yes, our. True. Yeah, like I had to complete the primary section from yes, Ginger yes. while coming from a relative's from a place. Relative place. Okay. Yeah. So how did that make you feel, specifically as a young girl then? What do you remember it with was, all of these changes? It was so tough. Mm. But the way I was built, sometimes I even sit back and when, wonder. Yeah. Like I had it just so fast. Mm -hmm. I don't want things to hold me back. Yeah. So when I, wa I went to my relatives to stay, Mm. I realized things have changed, mm -hmm. so it just settled in. I settled in, it sank into me, like things have changed. Now this is the flow, and mm -hmm. I went with the flow. But every mm -hmm. time I would come back for holidays, I would cry. Oh, you know? okay. I would okay. cry, thinking of me going How did that affect you in school? Did it affect you in any way? You're, just, you're now joining secondary school. Mm -hmm. You're just still adjusting to the changes. How did this affect you? Um, like I said, I always want to look on the positive side. Mm. When some things are so hard, by that time when I joined my Form 1, actually I was, my sister came and picked me out. There's mm. a sister of mine, uh, yeah. yeah. She was called Mariam, and she's the reason as to why people call me Sarah Gava and all that. Because oh, she, she yes. signed my, my papers of allowing me to act with the Ebony's after my Form 6. Oh, oh. So she took me up from Form 1, mm. and she started paying my tuition. Okay, and okay. I would stay with her in mm. return. So 
I was with her, I learned a lot of things when I was with her mm -hmm. and I had to keep the discipline because I realized when you're living with foreign with people, people yes. or you're living not with your parents, you have mm -hmm. to be at your best. Mm -hmm. So I tried being at my best mm -hmm. when I was with my sister. And um, I started studying. So after my, uh, my first term in Form 1, yeah. I started getting bursaries for studying Ooh, good. Nice. Like if you have, if you are first in class, you get 100% bursary. Yeah. Second, you get 50%. Yeah. Then if you are third, you'd get like, 70, yeah, 30%. 70, 30%. 30 30%. Yes. So I was like, I need to make my sister happy. Yeah. And I need, I need to, to make do her this. Proud. Yeah, because she's, she's gone out of her way. Mm -hmm. The rest of the family, we are struggling. They're struggling yes. to, to keep paying tuition for the other yeah. kids and all that. They're selling assets and all that. Mm -hmm. So I need to make this one happy yeah. so that I can stay in school without being disturbed. I can, yeah, I can imagine that. Cook over school yes. fees and yeah, all those yeah. things. So yeah. I kept it. Even her feeling like, you know, I cannot handle this one. I know. Mm -hmm. And then with the house chores, yes. I was yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I would do them right. and I would impress. Nice. I would make sure the house Everything is, is clean. clean. I clean cook. I would do everything. So, yeah. Actually, most of the time when I was living with her, mm. when I was in that school, she never needed her. A house help. help. Yeah. I would be there, I would do everything one time and even when I would go back home, mm -hmm. my tongue like one week she comes. <laughs> <I'll see her. laughs> and I would go stay with her. So yeah. I made her proud like for three years I was not paying tuition at That's all. Lovely. And then like form three third time they started paying because we had to register in OVTBT. Yeah. So I finished my O level properly. Nice. Then I joined Eleva at Aga Khan, still living with my sister. Mm -hmm. yeah, still living with her. So during my vacation, senior six. Mm -hmm. But you know, like as you So the school <coughs> the school was, was boarding or the It was there but it had a boarding section. So oh. later on uh, towards for, for the course. candidates. Oh, yeah. Okay. So in form four I joined the oh. boarding section. But lower classes yeah, I was doing, doing that. that. Okay. Now yet during that time at Najana Nkumi Christian School, that's when I developed that thing of art. Oh, so One you were active in drama, uh, very. In, in, in all the performances yeah, in school. Yeah, sure. Yes. I was. Mm. And um, <clears throat> I remember in form two, I was writing songs during really? that time. Yeah, I was wow. writing songs. And um, that was the time, you know Geoffrey Rutaya? Yes. The one of Igor's production. Yeah. They, they came at school. There was a friend mm. who tipped us off. They were like, they're forming these, these groups of young, yeah, talented, talented people. people yeah. So you sing, you mime, you do some little drama. Uh, and so that's, it's, it's and that's an, it for, yeah. yeah. It's an after school <laughs> activity. We're yeah. like, where are they? Mm. The one Chibuya there. Yeah. One day, we set out with friends. Yeah. We go to check it out. Mm. And um, after school, you're like, guys, this, school, is, this is the plot. Yeah, it's the plot. <laughs> so we went there, they were miming songs, they were doing some original compositions, and they nice. were dancing. Among the dancers mm. who were there mm -hmm. was Mr. Chisemakula. Yeah. That one, Papa. Yeah. We had a dancing activity. So we auditioned, yeah. and apparently we went through. Ooh, nice. Like, you're going to begin doing rehearsals and all that, but we told him after class. After class, yeah. Only after school. <laughs> yeah. He said, it's okay. Yeah. We started rehearsals. Yeah. Day one, day two. Day three, like after a week, they were like, this production is being rehearsed to be put on stage. Oh, wow. So we are going to need more hours of rehearsal yeah. from you. So you need to put in more hours. More hours, yes. Yeah. what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like you will be going home at around 8, 7, oh. 30. That is nice. Yeah, these things, you have to come home mm. and ask my parents. Yeah. So Geoffrey Lutaya yeah. came to my parents in Masaja yeah. to ask for permission for me to go. He and could rehearse. see potential yes. in me. Yeah. And my mom was like, okay, it's okay. Oh, wow. Just rehearsals. Nice. Don't worry, it was <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice. After like two days rehearsals, <laughs> Nanko Mausawe Moye Chido, she stood by the Nala. Kenza Mokravango gets them rehearsals as Chahunda. After accepting very well. No. I was so disappointed, yeah. so heartbroken. Yeah. And I went back, and I was among the best dancers. Yeah. Imagine. I went back to retire. Like, you know what? My mama said, no, can't come back to rehearsals. Mm, you so people finish late. late and all that. Then when you start putting up shows, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I was like, it's okay. But we can't come back after school, like after form four, because mm. this was now form two. Form two, yes. 
It's like it's okay, but you know, you know, you're so talented. You truly. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, oh, nice. School comes first. Yeah. I went back to school. So I kept on writing. My was so, you know, being there and something. At that point, pushed. you're like, I've given up on this. Yeah, so I continued doing my school stuff. So when we go to Aga Khan High School, yeah. We used to have sessions in our main hall mm. and we were required to perform, mm. those who are talented and all that. Mm. So I formed a group of girls, mm. rhythm creators. Oh, nice. So we would rehearse after school mm -hmm. and then we would, we would So you were really forms. invested in this? Very much. Very, like, yeah. Yeah. So we would mime songs, then we would do imagine. some original compositions <laughs> and tracks. Yeah. And then we, 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 I joined the Interact Club of mm -hmm. Aga Khan High School. I was the VP Ooh. and we would put together drama. So basically you had to, yes, you had to be creative, come yeah. up with things. Yeah, okay. as Interact Club of Aga Khan, yeah. we would go and put on shows in Bat Valley, in Pride Theatre, uh -huh. and people would pay. To and then come we, and watch you guys. Yeah, and then nice. we would run our projects as Interact nice. Club. Nice. So. You, it, it was really fun. So it it was really fun. Yes. So I, was not I can see you light up when you're talking about it. Eh? <laughs> because that's, I'm like, that's walking, it was, that I'm it. there, you know. Mm. <laughs> so it, it was all good. We'd go on stage and perform for people and all that. We yeah. would sing. Um, mm. Now, after my form five, actually, they wanted me to be head girl at, mm. a, at a certain point. I was like, ah, and I, all my primary, I, yes. I used to hold offices. I used to be a prefect. Mm -hmm. When I went for uh, form, form four, I was yeah, the head prefect. girl. Oh. Yeah, I was the head girl in Nigerian nice. Kumiya Christian School. So I was like, I'm tired of responsibility. Right I need now, to have I my to, life. Yeah, I, need yes. to, yeah, no, I need to enjoy <laughs> life in high school. Yes. But still, I, I was. your prefect, it's like everyone's watching. No. Mm. So I became a counselor. Oh. Then later on, Vice President, Interact Club, but Lovely. you know, Rotary. Uh, it's all about, exactly. you know, meeting new people, people exploring new yes. whatever. Yeah. Those are things you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Those are things you want. Yeah, sure. So this is who you've always been. Yeah, sure. You know, and, and you did stop yourself. And if you take away that part of me, uh, yeah. you've killed me. Oh, I can't. I can't Give imagine. me all the hard because things, but this, this is who you are. Yeah. This is who you are. So Even well. when your mom <laughs> wants you. You found a way around it. Yeah, you found sure. a way around it. That's quite interesting. Mm. So at this point, um, do you feel like this is where I'm headed or you thought it's just about school? Um, I was like, there was always something inside mm. that, would tell you, that would tell you you can do this, you can do more. more yeah. You have more to offer. Uh, I can imagine. So when I, when, in, in my vacation form six, mm. that's when I was like, I have all these months at home, mm -hmm. what am I going to be doing? Exactly. And then I would watch TV. By then, we didn't have exposure to so many, you know, mm, TVs those, around. Those we have, TVs, we yeah. had minimal stations. Yeah. And I was like, I would see people singing and I would go like, I need to, to, to be among to be, Yeah, I need to be on TV. <laughs> My heart would tell me, you have to be on TV. Yeah. So I was like, so one day I saw a song. Mm. It was by Prince Juko. Mm. It was playing on TV and these girls were singing, they were backup singers. Yeah, and, yeah. and I was like, the Ebony's, eh? VCO Studios. I was like, eh. yeah. I grew up watching the Ebony's. Uh, yes. They would come to Ginger. Yes. In Ginger Essence, so I was like, mm. Yes. I, I think, think I got. And then I, 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 I looked for the address. You're kidding like, me. Eh, we used really? to watch Wildlife Mat. <laughs> Yes. They used to come to Ginger. Yes. And they showed us some dramas, and I would see the girls because by that time they used to have slender girls. They yes. would dance ballet on stage. I was like, uh uh. Mm, I, I have to look to for Ebony's. <laughs> you, you thought to yourself, this is yeah, where I should it's, be. It's where I should be. So I went to yes. VCO Studios oh, yeah. during my vacation. Yes. When I went there. How easy was that? How did you feel? I think it was just the confidence. Ah, uh, yeah. You know when yes. you want something so bad, so, yes, yeah. And you're like, I have to go Plus regardless. I've been doing all of these I things on stages. Of people have been paying, hmm. so you were confident. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I stepped out. I went, mm. and I met the late Fred Cunha mm. out there. And who do I see coming out of that doors? Mm. Nakawunde. What was like, a bit exciting? I can't believe this. I'm looking at Nakawunde. Mm -hmm. Live, yeah. and she was so nice to me. Mm. She, she welcomed me. They were like, hey, I would just, I'm like, I belong to this place. <laughs> this is my place. This, this is, where, is I where I belong. <laughs> and yes. then Kunya was like, What do you want to do? I'm in mean, my vacation. Mm. I would like to do something with the Ebonese. I want to sing. I want to dance. How good are you at singing? 
as like I write my own music, I was like, what? Mm. Took me Which to is studio. hard to find, by mm. the way. And he took me to studio mm. and he did some testing. He gave me some old Ebony song and told me, I want you to like give it a remix and make it try and more, more, yeah, yes. modernize it and we see what mm. you can do. Mm. So I did something there. The song was called Abwaki. Mm. And Abwaki one decade ago. Oh, yeah, it was yes, some old yes. Ebony song, so yeah. I made it a little more modern and then mm. they recorded it. They recorded a demo and it was like, <clears throat> you come back over the weekend. Mm. And I went back over the weekend. Yeah. And they took me to the studios, they introduced me to the studio producer and the girls who were singing at the mm. time. But the kind of music they were doing wasn't my style. Yes. It was more of the drama style for the Ebony's. And mm. They, they needed the girls with those soprano voices, yes. those sharp voices and all that. Mm. And me, it was my weakest point. I could not do such songs. Such but then I had my modern flow. I get so you. <laughs> when they were doing those songs which required a number of people to participate, yes. you know how the dramas so of the Ebony's yes. are. So one comes and sings and the other one comes and sings. So me, I would do the raps. Oh, yes. I would, do, yes. I would write yes. the raps. Yes. Yeah. And one of the songs I, I wrote a rap for was called <clears throat> Full of Excitement, yeah. The Ebony's Make a Show. I remember that. So too. I did my rap. Nensidika. Wagamba, kula rap yo, osidike. So I did my rap, Nensidika. So when my boss came to, to listen to the outcome of what yeah. we were doing in the studios, mm. he was like, hey, who's that rapping? They're like, there's some new girl in the studios. She's like, oh. Did she do that? Yes. Did she sing herself? Yes. yes. Mumulet. Mm. That was the beginning of my story. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mumulet. Mm. So they took me to my boss. I was too much of a tomboy. Yeah, I can I'd imagine. I'd wear kundi shows with, with baggy, baggy pants, yeah. you know, <laughs> and gazik comedy with my cap backpack. Yeah. My cap backpack. Yeah. Like, this is the one I greeted him there. He's like, so you write music? I write my own music now. It's not your type of music. It's okay. <laughs> This rap is so I good. You pointed out, but it's not, just in case it's not your type of music. It's not your type of music. It's okay. Yeah. And then they, yeah. were, they, they had those up country shows. Yes. So one time they were coming from up country. I understand they had filmed that song, Full of Excitement, mm. and the outcome wasn't good. So they needed to reshoot the so song. Shoot. Oh. But then there was no way they would get all the artists in one place. That's cut, true. The Kakodio the, the they did. Mm. When they got them from that trip, they didn't bring them home. The whole bus was brought to VCL Studios to reshoot the song. <laughs> now that day, I get to see Dr. Bossa, Vicky, Nakaunde, the Koporo Kutes, the Olanyas, the entire cast was there. Yeah. Like, oh my God, the Gavins were still there. Yeah. Like, oh my, the Ritas, yeah. like Rita Tusubida. I was like, my goodness. You were starstruck at that Ooh. point. Ooh. You're like, wow. So I was there watching. So I knew my part was going to be given to one of the stars. Yeah. To mine in the song uh, as they were uh, shooting the video. Sh yeah. So I was there looking at them and Vichy and Vichy. Then when my part came, they were like, you know, party, or what gonna do? Mr. Kain was like, where's the girl who sang that part? Like, I was here, she's in the studio. Mugene Mumulet. Oh, studio, nice. bunch, my work guru was like, you're going to dress up and you're going to do your part in this song. Oh, wow. So I was there wow. swimming with the sharks. I the can thug. imagine. I can imagine it was the feeling. huge. Yeah. So I did the carap, which, which it was fun. And guess uh, who did my makeup? Mm. It was Vicky. Mm. She came and said, you don't have, I didn't know anything to do with makeup. makeup. Yeah. I didn't the, know about the fact being, that you were mm. <laughs> She came and did my makeup. She was so good to me. Yeah. Ah. Wow. That was my journey into the Ebony's. Mm. So we used to do soundtracks because I was now attached to the music studio, yes. not to the acting. Not only acting. Oh, you first went into in the music yeah. studio mm. because we used to do backups to the mm. to the theme songs for the plays, yeah. and then also do the songs for the plays yes. that, that that were going to be used within a particular play. Yeah. So <clears throat> there was this time they were concluding Daisy, and they were going to start casting for the boss. Oh. That boss was a huge hit. It was mm. a hit it was, yeah. among the Ebony shows. Yeah. So they used to hold what they call retreats, even up to now, but not so much. Mm. For every new production, they would have a retreat, a retreat in yes. Munyonyo. Mm. They would go, they would have meetings, organize for the retreat, then go. They cast, mm -hmm. and then they start rehearsals. 
So Nakonda was like, because she was the main producer by then, she was like, Fauzia, Mr. Karina said you're going to pack your bags, you're coming with us over the weekend. I was like, to like do what? what? <laughs> and this is still VAC. Yeah. Uh, so you need to talk to your mom. Uh, no, this, this, yeah, this is back. Now, mm. Mm. when I started working on the studios, mm. what I skipped was I had to take Mama Nakaunde uh -huh. and Dr. Bossa at home. At home. Ah, now those ones, there's no way they could be. Yeah, at my sister's <laughs> place because she was now in charge. Yes. In charge of me. Yes. Mama Naka, mm. Dr. Bossa, mm. coming at someone's home at that time. Oh, big deal. <laughs> big deal. No, it almost caused the entire village. <laughs> You must, you must, the whole village must have been uh, celebrating you. Mm. They came to now, she was staying in Namasuba, that's where we were living by that time. Yes. Now they came at home, you see, your sister is so talented, mm. we'd like to take her on as one of us, but we'd like to get your permission, of course. What you just to meet at odd hours. Yes. We want you to really, to give your consent, yeah, yes. We need yes. your consent. And she was like, it's fine, because she was a big fan of the Japanese. Yes, I can very, imagine. Very, very big fan. And she knew you always wanted this Yes, kind of thing. and for her, she was more into it than me. <laughs> Of course, she didn't get a chance to act, but she loved she drama. She was much more, yeah. Yeah, she was like, in the ambassador, she called her, let sister do it. Yeah. She signed, going back to Nakaunde, mm. pack your bags, we're going for a retreat. Like, what is a retreat? Uh -huh. Auntie, it's going to sit car, you get to pack your bags, we're going to cast, we have a new production coming yes. up. And when she started talking about me, even at school, okay. I would train the actors, but I never wanted to act. Oh, so you're in the background. I you was wanted more to into be, singing yeah, than, than the acting. Uh, than, yeah. yes. Then she was like, we're going to cast. You don't want to be there? I was like, uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to act. She was like, <laughs> Mr. Karen has told you we are going. You have to go. Everyone is leaving. <laughs> Even the music studio people have she to be there. She didn't want to know about you. I don't want acting. Yeah, and... They have to be there because they have to write the music for that for the production. That's true. I was like, Kawa. Put my things in the bags, which I tell my sister we're going. Yeah. They gave me a part. I auditioned for a part mm. to be Dr. Bossa's girlfriend. Those are the things I hated. <laughs> and it's your first time oh, 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 joining oh, oh. them to actually audition I, for it. I, I, I lied, I had a headache. I forged a headache. I cried. <laughs> they were like, Auntie Sise, Mama Naka, Auntie Sise, give us some painkillers, let her sleep for some time. So what happened? I thought they would tell me to get Nakuzanya Viesonyo. Then during that time, my sister fell sick. Mm. Actually, my sister fell sick before we, we started yeah. the boss, during uh. the, daisy, the, the, the daisy tours and all that, because the mm. production would take like a whole year. Oh. Yeah. They would do the upcountry tours, mm. and then they would do the main city oh, tours. So, so during, when, when they were doing Daisy, my mm. sister fell sick, mm. Mariam, that I was living with, mm. and I had to take care of her. So I went to Mr. Katina and I told him, you know what, I don't think I can continue with this, because mm. my sister who has been taking care of me is it's really, sick. really sick. Mm. I need to take care of her. And he was like, you go, you'll find us here. Just like that, he did not say, we're going to talk da, bichi, bichi. And I thought it was going to be like three weeks. Yeah. And she was there for six months in oh, hospital. Yeah. Okay. And then she got a little bit better. We took her back home. Then I started work again. Yeah. But then she relapsed. And oh. this time, when we had taken off for that true city car that I'm talking about, yes. that I was talking about, mm. she died. Oh, she passed dear. on. On that day, I remember I was with Raymond Rushabiro mm. and Simon, because me, uh, since I was a tomboy, yes, I would yes. find the company of boys Don't more, yes. I would find it more, more easily than the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. so I, I used to be with them a lot. Mm. I told them, you know what, I'm not feeling so well. Something tells me my sister has passed. Mm. And when she passed, because I was not home, my mom told everyone, don't tell her, because oh, she's away. She's, she's away, yes. She's going to be, you know, devastated, leave mm. her. So I stayed in that city car. Mobile phones hadn't yet come. Mm. In Abazina, I think there were very, very few people, mm. like the boss and all that. Then, <clears throat> I refused to act, but I had nothing to do. I had to take on the role. You had to, yeah. yeah. And I started rehearsals and all that. Then after those rehearsals, it was like two weeks. After those two weeks, I went home only to tell me my sister had passed. Okay. I was devastated. I was, I was like, why didn't you tell me I would have come, I would have come back home? Hmm. Because she's the reason as to why I'm here right now. Indeed. Because she even never got 
to see me to on stage. stage. Yeah. She didn't. Okay, she I didn't. Know. And that was going to be a fast fall. I know. Oh. No. Sorry. Now, of course, uh, we'll be right back with uh, Fauzia giving us more extended conversation. Now, of course, we've ended on a sad point, but we're coming back. You know, it takes strength. It takes courage. In most cases, certain things happen to us without us expecting them to. We're here at Dotage Exclusive. They give us the amazing space. We're here at Spear House. You cannot get lost. It, was, it is former WBS. Uh, you know, the Spear building. You can find it. Not Spear Motors. <laughs> if you hear Spear, you go with it. No. <laughs> it's from Adelphia's building, Spear House, here on Ginger Road. And we're back, Super Soul Sisters, we're here with Fauzia, and she's telling us her life story. I don't know about you guys, but I feel I'm in there. It's like, it's like you know, when you read a book and you feel like you're among the characters, <laughs> like every part you're there for some reason, every part you're in it. And, really? and uh, she's taking through her life journey, and that's what it, I hope you're feeling the same. I got my first stage role in the boat, and it was a huge role. Yeah. Because I was acting alongside the big stars, the big star Sabrina, yes. and then Dr. Bossa. Mm. And they had to teach me how to cut walk. Because I couldn't, I didn't know how to. And remember you tomboy. Yeah, I didn't know how to walk in heels. And oh practically, yeah. Sabrina would sit like this mm -hmm. with her cup of, go she, used to, to, she used to drink cereals. Yeah. So she used to get her box of cereals. Mm -hmm. And she, she would tell me, Kale, go to the other side. Put on the shoes you're supposed to use on stage. Mm -hmm. Come, you walk down. They should come and bang my back like I don't, like you know, straight yeah. up. Keep your head high, walk straight. Because I used to walk like a katumba. Like, yeah, because so you're not like, yeah, oh. you're confident like, about you your walk. Mm. <laughs> back has to be straight. She's like, you're a lady now, madam, wake up. Yeah. So I would keep walking and I should be like, go back. <laughs> come, go back. Yeah. Until I, would, until I go you to... You mastered, well, yes. Because yeah. my first entrance... Mm. In that drama, you had to. I, was, I was supposed to come in with class, a lot of class, yeah. wearing, you know, a long skirt, you know, a, a classy lady, the way you're supposed to be. Yeah. And in that show, yeah. Dr. Bossa was the Minister of Internal Affairs. Okay. So and, he, he had to, yeah. And he was mm. seeing, he had just lost, lost his wife yes. in the show. Younger, in the show. Yes. And he had me as a side chick and then the secretary. Uh, was this side thing? Uh, so, so, when like, I, like so my <laughs> first act in the office, I had to come back and ask whether he's in, and then she would size me up, yeah. and I would go like, mm, I don't care. So I had to do the catwalk. You had to. Nga to, to. and I would <laughs> enter the big man's office. <laughs> so that small walk from yes. here to there. Yeah, they had, had to, to be... train me for like two weeks oh, to wow. get it right. To get it. Ooh. Yeah. I thank God because that, that, you know, grilling and uh, all that yeah, shaped, shaped me yeah, later in yeah. the ground. And, and I love mm. that. You know, when you don't forget your first, your first, uh, your first moments of when you start something, mm. you keep going back and remembering how far you Yeah, came. you just can't forget and those moments. Indeed. And from then on, you never looked back. I never looked back. So I would get <laughs> roll after roll and big ones. Yes. I would get big ones. Yes. And my breakthrough role was mm. Skin PD. Uh -huh. I was acting like this brat, <laughs> Banange. <laughs> I, I would they wear also gave you, things. And they know it, it's, it's interesting because mm. they, they saw you were tomboy. I was tomboy. And they okay. said, no, let's give her a role that's totally the opposite of her and see how that will play and out. And in the Ebony's, when a show comes and they cast you, mm. you have to keep changing roles. Yes. You have to act different characters. They don't you can't do type the cast same. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I love about you for those those characters yeah yeah because even up to now even right now i'm acting like a nigerian in urban life <laughs> nice so i have to speak in, in a nigerian accent uh -huh. and then i have to do those <laughs> nigerian things <laughs> <laughs> so they would yes. they, was, they would train you to be versatile in yes, there, you can't I do is. the same role that, you know yeah and so, that's good mm, it's really that's good, good. so good. my breakthrough role i was a brat mm. i would step on chairs i, I Oh God, disrespectful. I would say all sorts of things, but people loved the character. Yeah. So when I because now when when you exude it well, when when they see you taking on that role and owning it, 
then we're going to enjoy it. And it was my best, you know, one of my best roles. Yeah. You know, I love acting when I'm bad. You know? <laughs> I love acting with those roles when I'm bad. Yeah, you do. Because the real force here is just so down to I art. Yeah. And I'm so easy and simple. Yes, so, I see that. Definitely. So I love those I tough that. roles. Yes. So at that point, what, what was running through your mind in terms of, okay, so I've now got a big role. This is the first big show. Stage fright. I had a lot of stage fright. Yeah, because you, people come to watch and, and expect perfection. Yeah. No one is yeah. going to be like, oh no, she's, she's just getting there or anything. Mm. People are going to judge you as it comes. Yeah. yeah. But one thing I, I, I'm so thankful about with the Ebon is mm. you go through some sort of training. That's good. So by, when, when, we, when I joined the drama section, mm. we had like monitors backstage. Ah. Someone would be on a monitor near the, 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 the entrance to the stage mm -hmm. and they would have a script. There was a prompter. Yes. And there was that one who would tell you, this is coming on next, this is coming on okay, next, the prompters. Yes. And they would tell you, now be, be, get in the mood, you know? Yes, like Psych up for the role, you're yes. about to go on stage. Yeah. And when your time came, there was someone who would usher you in, come on, now enter. Nice. You remember, you're supposed to cry, you remember, you're supposed to be in this mood. So we had all those things oh, backstage. Nice, nice. So it was, mm. it was a whole process and it was a, it was a school. Mm. It was like a school. We learned mm. how to do everything. People were there to guide us and all that. I love that. So you would go on stage and when the Nakaundas would come on stage, ah! People would scream for them, yes, you know, and then you'd yes. be there and go like, when, I, when am I getting there? Will I ever there? get such a cool relation? <laughs> I know. Well, uh, I have, but it takes time. It takes time. Resilience and mm. persistence. Mm. What, what challenges did you face as a young girl joining <sighs> the industry in itself? It what are was, some of those challenges? It was so hard. Mm. One thing with the Ebon is like, it was like a family. Mm. So they would take you in and they would, we had, it was like a cage. Yeah. So you had no space to get spoiled or whatever because you were always working. Yes. They work. mentor you, you work. Yeah. They mentor you work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah. we used to have like the singers in the group, Mama Naka, the, the mm. disciplinarians. We used to have like a system mm -hmm. in place mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would do the checks and balances. That is true. Yeah. It's good to have those. Yeah, we, we had the checks and balances in place and mm. you would not just go astray like that. Because mm -hmm. even if you did something, well, they would call you in a meeting and they would sit I you down. We still have that kind of discipline in today's... No. Um, no. Field and no, that's why the breed of people we had then mm. was different from what yes, we're having right now. Their time. Because that, the process we used to go through, mm -hmm. those people used If you to try to do the same now, people would feel like you're, being you're encroaching too, on their on privacy their, and uh, yes, on freedom. Their life and freedom. Mm. Oh my goodness, this freedom thing. <laughs> that freedom so, thing. But, <laughs> but, but, but then now, over the years and experiences, you said you love taking on these. Bad characters, yeah, bad girl characters. <laughs> Have they affected you in regards to how people think about Before, who you are? Or yeah, there was a role I used to do. I did it in a series called Checho. Mm. I was this Munyankore chick, eh? and I would yes. insert every stupid thing in my <laughs> face. I would insert each and every person in my face. And ah, I love how she has all the accents. Mastered. People, people hated me <laughs> for that role. They were like, the woman is so mean. Mm. It was a mean character. character yeah. It was remember. a mean character. And for character. so long now, in, 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 I think in, as far as I have seen in history of acting, yeah, so many people. I remember there is um, what was it generations or generations, generations where they hated. Um, was, what, what was her name? her name? She had dreadlocks. Yes, and only for us to realize later on in life that no, that's not who she is. Yeah, but that she had that role she, under control. Yeah, yeah. What, what was her <laughs> name? It has gone. I remember Karabo, well, but then I've forgotten yes, that. The, 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 the name one. And the, yes. My early entrance into this industry yes. affected me. Mm. It really took away my childhood, I oh. think. I never got to enjoy my freedom yes. as a yes. youth because mm. I went into work, I dived into work at an yeah, early busy, stage. Busy, busy, then busy. you lack that privacy when you become a star. Everyone is in your space. Everyone is in your mm. space. So, mm. so this whole time you're acting, you said you you work and school weren't working out quite well. Yeah, they were, I dropped out actually because mm. I'd started going to university for mm. my course, BA Economics mm. at Macquarie. Mm. 
and we would go on trips for like several All days. Time, yes. We would be away for so many days. You come back, cause works are done, there had been mm. tests have been done, so I dropped out. Yeah, yeah. Then I went on for so many years. Mm. And at some point in life, I felt I was inadequate. I had mm. to go she back to school. Back. Yeah. Because I was doing so well in school. Mm. I was an A student. Okay, yeah. That even in my <laughs> my O level deputy, mm. it's called Mr. Senkumba. Mm. I went to school to visit, like when you go back to your former car school, you yeah, know, yeah, to so say hello. Know, like I, went. <laughs> I stepped into his office, was like, Fauzia, I'm so mad at you. I was like, what now? I thought I was raising a kadaga. <laughs> I thought I was raising a kadaga. Hey, go and start doing drama. Drama, oh God, what a loss. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was like, what a loss. Mm. <laughs> oh God, I was mm. like, Mr. Senkumba, you know, you know, into BSC, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I ended up that side. Yeah. I guess it was my calling. It was your calling, definitely, mm. definitely. Yeah. So then um, after a couple of years, you go back. I go back to school. Yes. I went to... Okay, are you? Yes. And I did, I did bachelor's okay. in journalism. In journalism, yeah, yes. Yeah, bachelor's in and journalism. That's, and that's quite lovely that you thought to yourself, I think I need to go back. I had to. Yes. Had and to. and like, let's, let's go to the point where I asked again, where I said, how do you help people differentiate mm -hmm. the characters on stage, the characters that you take on, and who you are as a person? It's only when you meet them. Yeah, but those who haven't seen you in person will Still always associate, associate you, their, you with that stage character. Yeah, yeah. What they watched and loved. And, exactly, and like exactly. Yes. But when you meet them, actually, mm. me, I meet people most of the time, and they go like, "When I found why you're so different in yeah. real life." <laughs> I, I, like, you know, I was like, oh, the way you walked in and you all smiles and you got along with people. I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is what they call pure humility. Mm -hmm. I don't want to seem like I've, I've tried to say anything, but you know, humility comes with people um, opening up to letting people in. Mm -hmm. And when you let people in, you learn a lot from yeah. that. And, and I really do appreciate that, that you know, from you. Thank so you. you have a, a girl. Girls. Uh, Girls. Yeah. Ah, so when did this happen? Because it, you're very busy um, with work, then you went back to school. At what point do the girls come in? There, in the middle, in the there. Middle. You get to meet someone <laughs> yes. who loves you the way you are, yes. who understands you. understands you, yes. And, and it's important. It's there. It so our two important. girls, yes. one actually is making, is making 20 in wow. June, so, yeah, in June, wow. on the well 17th done. of June. Well done. And the little one is <laughs> just made for. That's very fine. Yeah, but you, they you are, we can tell that's a career woman no. standard. <laughs> you know, if this is you're like, no, she cannot be alone. I need another one. Yeah. Which is fine. Well done on the 20 year old. Yeah. How did you deal with the teenage life? I, she was Unhangi, I thank God up to today. Yes. That girl has been under control. There's a way in which she conducts herself, herself that surprises yeah. me a lot. Mm. Do you know she's the one who set up this interview for me? Yes, you, you mentioned earlier on. I'm she like, was like, okay. Mommy, there is no way you cannot be on Super Soul Sisters. Yes, and yet you were Super Soul Sisters. She was like, there is no <laughs> way. I love that. And she's that. like, then she gave me her phone. I watched a few interviews and mm. uh, she was like, you have to be on. I'm going to make arrangements. I'm going to contact them. Nice. Before uh, I knew producer, it. Said, uh, she said she's your manager. <laughs> Before I knew it. <laughs> This girl, I love, and you know she has that. She has your spirit. She has your zeal. Right now, she's undergoing some mentorship yeah. program yeah. with KSK. Yeah. And before she left in the morning, she was like, "Mommy, I hope you're ready. You're set for the interview. You have to leave by 11. You have to be out of the house." Oh, I was like, nice. I got it under control. <laughs> that is nice. That is control. lovely. But well I'm done. so proud of her yes. because she's. She has discipline. Yes. I'd, I haven't struggled. Um, let me tell you, I've not struggled with yes, her. Yes, that's good. That's During good. her teenage, I did not struggle with her. Yeah. She would come and tell me things and I would get surprised. I'm like, is she the one telling me this? Yeah. And when you go wrong, she comes and tells you, Mommy, Mommy mm. I, don't want, I don't want this to rub you the wrong way, but I think when you did this and that, oh, yeah. I think it was not right. Mm. But I don't, I, I don't want to judge. Bitchy, bitchy, then yeah. you go like, yeah. She's she sort of... <laughs> she has, Told you a point, yes. You take it in and yeah. work on it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's lovely. So a message to the young girls out there and boys, because the point of this is to show all our super soul sisters to the world, to the Ugandans out there, mm. that women are doing amazing things. And she's an interpreter. Oh, that lovely. Age. I'm not surprised <laughs> when you say that. I'm not surprised. And this is the spirit we need. And I know you encourage her. I do I encourage her. So I make sure yes. I nurture her dreams. Yes. I water them. Feed them, yes. Because mm. I've, I've gotten to know what negativity does to our children. Ooh, they yeah. always have a point to say, but if we don't give them the room to say what they want to say, then we're sort of we are suffocating them, yes, and they have brilliant true. ideas. That is true. So she's a CEO of Shuvera. Ooh. It's a company that does cover shoe, shoe covers, mm -hmm. and they started it while she was in King's College Budo with her friends oh. under the program of um, Stan Big Bank National School Championships. Okay, so they true. became among the finalists. Okay, so how mm. does that work? She's doing her things mm. as she's undergoing this mentorship program as she waits for. So shoe the covers, I don't understand when we say shoe covers, what are we? On the recent blankets and wines, uh -huh. it rained cats and dogs. Ah. And they had a stall. Nice. They sold out in the first 30 minutes because mm. everyone needed something to protect their beautiful shoe, shoes, beautiful sneaker. I can imagine. And you know, Shuvera yes. was, was it. Love it, love it. I think we should have also one of these days because now mm. those are the kind of women who want to show up, to show off. Eh? We're showing all of you off because people need to know that you're doing great things and you're doing great things. Thank you. Yes. Please talk to the young girls up there and boys, his final remark. I, uh, in regards to getting their dreams if they want. But real quick, what do you live by? What's your mantra? What drives you? I was too much of a procrastinator. <laughs> I would set goals and I would dream yes. about those goals. Then I would watch these motivational speakers, speakers. and I tell you, if you want to start something, just start. start it. And I was like, how do I just start? start. How yes. do I? Yes. I mean, so before I even start telling them anything, mm. in the lockdown, during mm. the lockdown, yes. you know the theaters were closed? Yes, they were. Everything, that's where the bread was coming from. Mm. No business, no nothing, mm. no income. Yes. So I was like, I've always wanted to beg. Mm. Why don't I start during this time when everyone is home, I'm doing nothing? Mm. And people were on that status says, no, jogging, cooking pancakes, because every time it's like, <laughs> let me start baking mm. i go on youtube mm. started looking out for recipes yeah. started working the magic so one day i made cupcakes the first ones came out so bad then the other ones came out and they had that little pick that had just that had sunk just in it, yeah i put them on status i made cupcakes today and then my friend saw the cupcakes she was like so did you make those she's called farida yeah. Did you make those? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Make for me some. I'm going to buy. Oh, wow. So I had some party plates at home. Oh, yeah. Those plastic ones. Yeah. I made cupcakes. I put them on the plastic party plates. plates yeah. I covered them with cling film. And I sent a border to her. You she know. was living just a few whatever away from me. Yeah. And then the border guy came back with 10K. Nice. Nice. I looked at the 10K. And you're like, yeah. I'm like, this is what they call just, just. start. <laughs> I love that. Just start. just start. Now, I own Fuzzy's Bites and Cakes. Ooh, Though yes. I'm doing my cakes from home, but it has yeah. socials. Yes. Fuzzy's Bites and Cakes on Instagram yeah. and on Facebook. Mm. And we have our WhatsApp number, which has the catalog. So mm. I get orders from my friends, my friends' friends. That now it's lovely. It's it's becoming huge. Yes. And even my daughter and helps me out better. sometimes. Getting yes. better. And yes. that is my side income. Nice. It's my side hustle. I when I'm not that. on stage, screen, mm -hmm. I am baking. You're baking your cakes. Yeah. That is lovely. And people have been so supportive. Yes. There are those who ordered my cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I just started. And I'm like, just, uh, for us, we believe in you. Yeah. Back. Back. Yeah. Back. That was lovely. That was lovely. So that's what I said, Fussy's Bites and Cakes. Okay, that's <laughs> Now, mm. I would like to urge the mm. young people out there, because they always say, inspire before you expire. If you have a dream, if you've ever wished to do something so bad, and you feel it in your heart like you can really do it, just go out there and do it. Nothing should deter you. You should 
always stick to what you want. It's that resilience. Mm. I'm here because I've stood the test of time. I've had so many obstacles, but you know, like they tell you, just wake up and show up. If you have mm. an appointment to go to, if you have something that you have to do, any step you have to take in realizing your goal, just step out. Mm. Step out and take no, make no excuses. Just put one brick at a time. Before you know it, your mm. dream will be just before your face. Indeed. Work Indeed. hard. Indeed. Wise words from Fauzia Nachibonika. Now you know her of so many characters. <laughs> but here is the Fauzia today that has come to you and said, this is who I am. This is the journey I've taken. Now, never hesitate. However, it's not an easy industry, is what she says. She was well put together. She was very specific on what she wanted. Now, if you're going to join the industry and you're like this, eh? <laughs> that may be a little tougher. Okay, we all have different journeys, but at least this will inspire you back at home. My name is Rowena Kajima. Thank you so much for watching for me and the entire team that does love you so much for keeping it here on UBC and watching um, Super Soul Sisters and our Super Soul Sisters, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we do appreciate you so much Thank for coming. You. I'm personally very excited. I'll show my excitement later. But have a good <laughs> night. <laughs> Thank you for having me.